This is KGW News at 6. And we're going to get right to some breaking news for you here. There has been a shooting in southeast Portland involving police officers. This is all unfolding around southeast 122nd and Ankeny. Police were called out to the area about 90 minutes ago. All we can tell you right now is that this investigation is in its very early stages. We're going to take a live picture now from the scene where we're waiting to get an update from police any minute now. So the scene is right near Menlo Park Park and Ride, and you can expect traffic impacts, of course, on 122nd Avenue through that area. We're still trying to get a lot of information. We don't know yet who was hurt in this shooting or how badly if somebody was hurt or shot, what the situation is. We do have a photographer, as you'd see on scene, giving us these live pictures. He says he saw Chief Daniel Outlaw there. It's not clear if we're going to hear specifically from her, but again, we are waiting to hear from police in a briefing. And as soon as that does happen, we will switch back to this story and bring it to you live. Right now we want to go to more breaking news. A third drowning in our area in just the last few days. This time it involved an eight year old boy. It happened this afternoon at Oxbow Park in Gresham. KGW's Mike Benner learned the location may have played a role in this tragedy. An incredibly difficult afternoon out here at Oxbow Park. Both witnesses and first responders doing everything in their power to locate and save this little eight year old boy. But it was just too late. We can tell you this all unfolded earlier this afternoon. Oxbow Park, the gathering spot for this eight year old boy and family on this hot afternoon. We're told the boy was swimming near the boat launch. It's an unmarked swimming hole, but a common area to swim. At some point, the boy went under and did not resurface. Witnesses called 911. The water rescue team from Gresham Fire responded and searched the area. And just after 2.15, they found the body of this little eight year old boy. We're told he was not wearing a life jacket. Here's Battalion Chief Jason McGowan. You know, these rivers are unpredictable. They're colder than what people think they are. They, uh, they're more swift than what people think. And, and like I said earlier, you know, you can walk out, be at knee depth, and before you know it, you're in over your head. Um, life jackets are very important, very important. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about it every year. This happens to be the third drowning in the Portland metro area in less than a week. Just last Friday evening, a young man vanished while swimming between Willow Bar and Reeder Beach on Savvy Island. His body has not yet been located. And later that same night, a 22-year-old man drowned while swimming at Kelly Point Park. First responders can't stress enough, you need to be very, very careful while swimming in our local waterways. Reporting in East Multnomah County, I'm Mike Benner. Now back to you. And let's go back to that breaking news. The officer involved shooting 122nd in Ankeny. We have a police briefing that's underway now. Let's listen in. Several hours. And like I said, I don't have a lot more information to share at this time. I'm not going to be able to take any questions. I will be providing another media update as I'm able, and I'll put that information out um, on Twitter so that you know where to stage, which will probably be right here again, but what time I'll try and give you a heads up on that. So know, again, um, for those of, uh, those of you just joining, uh, Lieutenant Tina Jones with the Portland Police Bureau, public information officer. We had an officer involved shooting this afternoon in the area of 121st Avenue and Southeast Ankeny Street. The officer involved in the shooting is not injured. The suspect involved has been pronounced deceased at the scene and we have a very significant traffic impact out here from 122nd Avenue from uh, Burnside Street to Southeast Stark Street. So I'm not able to take any questions at this time. Um, there's no ongoing public safety risk to the community. Thank you. Okay, so there you hear it. Um, very brief from police. We can't tell you that there was an officer involved shooting. Just reiterating kind of what she said there. A suspect has been killed. We do know that. Uh, they say there's no risk to the public right now. No officers were injured. Significant traffic impacts, though, so you're going to want to avoid that area. 122nd and Burnside to Southeast Stark, and we'll bring you more information. We're going to keep following both of these breaking stories. We told you about the drowning of an eight-year-old boy at Oxbow Park. Now this officer involved shooting. We will uh, continue to follow this on social media, also on KGW.com and on our new KGW app. So it has been six months now, if you can believe it, since the government shutdown. Do you remember that? Uh, and at the time, we talked a lot about some of the local workers and businesses that were hit pretty hard of the, uh, because of it, and they were losing business. Now, KGW's Pat Doris decided to catch up with some of those businesses now that the dust, dust has settled a little bit. Pat, what can you tell us? 
Well, things are definitely looking better, Laurel and Dan. This is the Shine Distillery and Grill. It's in North Portland at the corner of North Williams and North Skidmore. And it's one of the businesses that I visited way back in January because none of this was here. It was under construction, and then suddenly it was frozen when the government shut down. Back in January, owner John Petit struggled to contain his frustration over the federal government shutdown. When do you open? When do you open? Well, when do the, 90 days from when the government opens. It happened at the worst possible time for him. He'd applied for a small business loan, and it was getting approved and would help finish the construction inside. And then suddenly, it wasn't. The SBA uh, wasn't able to generate what they call a loan number. Um, we, were, we were within hours of having that loan number generated. If we would have had that, instead of a 45-day delay, we could have kept on moving. The SBA was not able to generate the number because it shut down with much of the rest of the federal government. Petit could not get the loan, could not pay the construction workers, so he and his friends got to work themselves. A friend of ours did all of the uh, cutting of some of the old reclaimed lumber from out of the building, ran it through a bandsaw, then my brother and AJ, the uh, new bar manager, helped put on and, and apply all those facades. All of the tabletops were constructed out of uh, uh, reclaimed lumber from the building that had had a fire. The result, a distillery and grill that can hold a couple hundred people, but it opened two months later than planned because of that government shutdown. We do soups, sandwiches, and salads. Another business that felt the impact is the little cafe inside the Edith Green Federal Building in downtown Portland. It's owned by Celine Richards, who's legally blind. We visited her during the shutdown, too, and she worried she'd lose the business because all the workers, her customers, were gone, told to stay home. So my fear is that I will lose those employees if this continues on much longer. But the shutdown ended in late January, and she hung on just long enough. She had to watch her pennies for a little while, and of course everybody did, but it was, it was great. It didn't matter, everybody, it kind of pulled everybody together. That's Celine's mom, Juanita, who helps out. She said publicity about Celine's plight helped bring in even more customers once the workers returned. Awesome. They've just been great. Uh, it took a while to come back, but now we're back and people are just as, they're so friendly and they're so nice, so we're doing great. Great enough that Celine is able to take off on vacation now, which is why we couldn't talk with her today. Back at Shine, the distillery and grill is beginning its second week of being open to the public. It has been a struggle, but the owner says it's worth it. It's the dream come true. It is absolutely a dream come true. It's a beautiful facility. And back in that little federal cafe, they told me that during the shutdown, there was a customer who saw some of our stories about the struggle that was going on came in and left a $500 tip. That's kind of nice, huh? I'll say that helps and I'm so glad to see they're recovering now. Thank you, Pat, for the update. Portland fire crews are trying to figure out what caused a homeless camp in Southeast Portland to go up in flames. Not only did it destroy everything at the camp, but an ember started another fire at a home across the street. KGW's Brittany Falkers joins us now from the scene. Brittany, what does it look like there today? Crews were here earlier today to clean up, but the smell of burning plastic is still in the air. You can see scorched ground in this tree here. That's all really that remains from where this homeless camp was set up. And that fire spread across the street to this home next door. That blue tarp there is indicating where Portland Fire and Rescue had to cut into the roof to get that second fire out. And this is not a new problem for the city of Portland. Since 2017, Portland Fire and Rescue has responded to more than 1,000 homeless related fires. I heard a big boom and when I come out the flames were like 10 15 feet tall and a lot of smoke coming this way. Charred shopping carts and blackened debris is all that remained Tuesday from a fire that sparked at this homeless camp Monday. Neighbors say they heard explosions and smoke could be seen from the other side of the freeway. Slowly it just became bigger and bigger and bigger and flowed over. Portland Fire and Rescue responded to the scene just after four Monday evening. They were able to get the fire out at the camp, but less than a half an hour later, they saw the roof of the home across the street on fire. And we looked up and her roof was smoking and flaming. Fire crews used chainsaws to cut off parts of the roof to make sure it was fully out. Luckily, no one was injured and the people living there were able to stay in their home. It was pretty ghastly, pretty ghastly.
Portland Fire and Rescue Lieutenant Laurent Picard says although they have not determined an official cause of the fire yet, they want those experiencing houselessness to be careful with propane. We're asking the campers to be to be very careful with propane. Uh, many of them do use propane to cook, and that's just a, a reality uh, of, of life with this homeless crisis. He advises those using propane to ensure it's shut off after cooking, keep open flames away, and to have a fire extinguisher whenever possible. Also, uh, open flame can be really dangerous around tents and tarps because they are petroleum-based products and they can uh, catch on fire very readily. This isn't the first time a fire at a homeless camp has caused damage to other property in Portland. In December, a Portland lawyer filed a half a million dollar lawsuit against the city after a fire in 2016 at a homeless camp seriously damaged her home and business. Back here in Southeast, neighbors say they've contacted Portland police about this camp before, but they don't see camps like this here often. This one had been here for about two weeks with at least two people living here. Kind of scary because there's a lot of kids here. I have two granddaughters here, and so we really would prefer not to have them. Now, Portland police did tell me that they have focused patrols in this area right now. Portland Fire and Rescue is still investigating the cause of the fire here at this homeless camp, and they don't yet have the estimates on the damage to the home across the street. Meanwhile, earlier today, there was another fire that happened with some garbage outside a homeless camp. That was near the on-ramp to 205 and Foster. Luckily, though, firefighters were able to put that one out very quickly.